All right, game number two, NIP looking strong in game number one. We'll see if they can make it a fast two ball or if Rave can strike back and take us into an ace match. Although, we got Paul's, uh, if we can load in, that would be a good start. Well, it looks like we're waiting on some spectators here. All right, there we go. Woo! All right, Winter, NIP versus Rave. NIP took game one. What do Rave need to do to prevent this from being a 2-0? Uh, I think Rave at this point has Dire, and it's much easier to play a slower paced game if you're on the Dire side because of the easier access to Roshan. And in the past, they have been shown that they can actually play Lycan really well on the Dire side. So that'll be one of the things that I've been looking forward to see Rave do in this game. Yeah, maybe control that Roche pit yeah. a little bit. We'll see that Earthshaker first ban yeah, the by annoying NLB. Earthshaker the last game. Yep. By Nip, constantly protecting the Shadow Fiend in the middle lane. Yep. NIP will have first pick this go around, and we swap sides, of course. Uh, we'll see what these teams want to do. Earthshaker, not surprised to see him banned out. He made a big difference in that game. It seemed at first, it's you know, you see that Earthshaker up there. He's level one for the first couple minutes, but. Babysitting that Shadow Fiend is part of the reason Era got as big as he did. Yeah. Era got so huge just thanks to the Earthshaker dying for him and making stacks and making sure that the Shadow Fiend had a, such a good start in the game. They even almost killed the Storm a couple of times. So it was really good play by the Earthshaker overall. Yeah, it seemed like that Nyx Assassin pick from NIP really worked out well. It was their final pick. He went to the off lane, played by Jonas Sampan. And, uh, well, great pick against the Medusa, but even outside of countering the Medusa, it seemed like he just kind of controlled the game. He moved around, set up a lot of kills, and really made a lot of space for his cores. Radiant team yeah, back. definitely. This last game, the Axe as well did uh, such a good job in controlling the game and making so much room for the Shadow Fiend to farm. And yeah. there's still Chen in the pool, though. And both of the teams actually play a very good Chen. Ten seconds remaining. Yep. Interesting, uh, okay, Sniper banned out by NIP, Rave they, taking out the They want to go for Shadow Fiend because they're on Radiant. Shadow Fiend is much stronger on the Radiant side because of the neutrals being closer to the middle lane. And Sniper is one of those heroes who will give Shadow Fiend a very hard time in the lane. This puts Rave in an interesting position here. They may, wanna, they may be tempted to ban out the Shadow Fiend, but that leaves a lot of scary heroes in the pool. They could first pick that Chen. Okay, Chen will be the one that's banned out. Oh, and Troll Warlord, another one of those heroes that made it through. He was first banned in the last game, and a hero notoriously difficult to deal with. Hmm, there's still the Axe, so Axe could be one of those heroes that can deal with the Troll, because you have so much attack speed, and if you get lucky with the spins, you can kill the Troll easily in a fight. Well, Rave going to think about it a little bit here. They took a lot of time to decide on that first ban, and I think the Wisp is definitely uh, much needed in terms of taking Maybe him out of the Maybe they pool. open with a Venge plus one since Five they're on Dire again. They could Venge do a Venge bat. Be really good there. Eh? Yeah, Venge bat, bat plus bat rider could be a good opening here for Rave. Witch Doctor. No, but they'll do something different. Witch Doctor. Dire team pick. Okay. That's still the Shadow Fiend. Or any of the team still really good in this sort of games, and X as well, which Doctor Plus X also it's a good possibility for Rafe. Yeah, the Maledict is not a bad way to try and deal with that troll a little bit in the laning phase at least. If you want to try and set up a kill there, what else could Rafe grab here? Ax or Shadow Fiend have to be pretty Ten tempting. Are they probably thinking of picking a Storm again so that Nip doesn't have Five the troll plus remaining. Storm combination, which could be a potential deadly combination. Battle trance on Storm. Okay, so it's gonna take be the axe, axe plus Radiant Witch Doctor. Very standard opening when you go for the Witch Doctor. They complement each other Radiant. very well in the lanes. Oh, you Radiant hear that crowd. Solo mid Lina. Probably. I you think know, it'll be the Fe Olympia. Fury mid. Souls plus Battle Trance, huh? You know, we've seen NIP do this. Um, I think it's NIP. It's kind of the machine gun Lena, and it's actually ridiculous. This is a hero that you don't think of as a carry, but 
she will do a lot of physical damage this game. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, and a lot of uh, spell damage as well against the opponent. So she's like a mixed Reserve type of carry. A lot of damage physically and magically as well. Yeah, once she gets that Yule Scepter, she can move around the map and really be uh, difficult to deal it's with. It's a very interesting tempos. pick that early. Usually you pick Lina if you see the opponent, like they have caught because Lina does well against QP or even the Shadow Fiend, but they are picking the Lina without even knowing what's the mid laner of the opponent. Possibly maybe thinking, thinking about putting the Lina on the support posi position, which is not we see so much nowadays. Mostly it's just the solo mid Lina. Yeah, the great thing about this NIP hmm. opener is how flexible it is. You can put that troll safely, you can put him mid. Same with Lina, you could really put her pretty much anywhere except the off lane, and she'll thrive fairly well. So pretty flexible here. They have been running a lot of Lina recently, though. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they'll go for a Shadow Fiend here. He may just be uh, ignoring this draft unless Rave want to pick him up. Third band's coming out. Zeus banned out by NIP, and the Bat Rider, third band by Rave. Yeah, banning out the Zeus would actually mean they wanted to pick Bat Rider, and Rave thought, Rave thought that Bat Rider would be really strong if Zeus is not in the pool, so you can't cancel his blink. So that's probably the top process of Nip here. And they're banning out the Dazzle as well. Probably worried about Dazzle, Witch Doctor, X Tri Lane, which could be something remaining. that's really hard to deal with earlier. You know? So they yeah. take out the Dazzle remaining. so the X doesn't have that double heal support combination. Yeah. It's one of those trio of heroes that's really scary in a tri lane, but also in that mid game, there's a lot of synergy across all that physical damage, the weave and what have you. Clockwork, he'll be the fourth ban here for Rave, limiting the off lane choices for NIP. Enigma is a hero that's still in the pool at NIP. I've also been running quite a bit recently. Uh, recently. Something they may consider if they feel like they can get away with the greed. Hmm. Maybe Tide Hunter as well. Tide against the uh, Axe. We saw last game, even though it didn't Ten work out, remaining. we saw the potential of the Ravage counter initiating the Berserker's Call. Five Could be a good option for Nip again this game. Well, Rave, can I think about this third pick Reserve here? Time. A tricky opening from NIP. Really hard to read exactly how you yeah. want to lane this. A lot this. of mid heroes would have a hard time against Lina. Maybe you go for TA. TA is actually fairly good 1v1 matchup against Lina. Well, there's Eventual Spirit. Second support pickup for Rave. A nice support duo there on the dire side. You get a little bit of Roche control with that minus armor and the scouting tool. It feels like Lycan could be a good hero here for Rave's lineup. They have the venture already. Yeah. A lot of aura and damage for the Lycan. Whoa, Ogre Magi now for NIP, the big Very boy. Very aggressive supports here. Yeah. You know, Lina plus Ogre will be very good supports early on if they actually want to put Lina towards the support position. A lot of bursts with the Ogre Magi. It's going to be a core Lina winter. I hate to burst your bubble. They're going to so bloodlust the Lina. Blood She's going to get the Fiery Souls, and they're going to use the Battle Trance, and she will actually be a Fiery Machine Gun. Yeah, Ten that's actually very remaining. ridiculous. Though. They've done it before, and it works well. Five seconds remaining. So you give him, you give him all the. Are you gonna build like a damage item first? Do they I think do he does the pretty standard build, like Yule's Ags Blink, and then after that, when you get to the late game, that's where you look for like the Mjolnir. I probably solid. said a crit would be really good, but I don't think I've ever actually seen Lim get it. Spirit. All right. It looks like they'll try to counter fire with Three fire. Ember two. Spirit, the fourth pick for Rave. A lot of fighting potential early on. X and Ember. Heroes that can fight with just a couple of basic items and a few levels. Fairly good versus the supports, Ogre. And, you know, Ember can actually kill the Lina fairly easily during the mid game fight. Disruptor. So the Lina doesn't have a spells up. Oh, Disruptor. A good support versus the Ember. The Glimpse and the Silence would provide a lot of lockdown for a hero like Ember Spirit. Interesting. We've seen a lot of Disruptor so far today. Yeah, it's, a, it's a very versatile support. A yeah. good ganking spell with the glimpse and teamfight control with the silence. Yeah, 
particularly good when you have an aggressive lineup, as is always, if you're running away from the disruptor, that's when the glimpse is really quite potent and leads to those little pickoffs. Also, just great against the, the Ember Spirit, notoriously yeah, elusive. And even the Axe, though, when he jumps in, there's a little cast time for the Berserker's call. So there's a window of opportunity for you to silence him first before he gets the call off. Mm. Well, final band's coming out. Rave, they take out the Centaur War Runner and Ninja's in pajamas. They still need take out the Bruce. Hero. Ember is usually Chrissy and Axe we Ryo. So the last hero will be something that is more farm oriented. I think PA could be could be mm. a good matchup against Lina, like I mentioned. Who else does well against Lina besides the TA? OD maybe. I haven't tried that matchup yet, but Lina does very well against most of the heroes. What about Viper? Uh, yeah, Viper could be a difficult opponent for Lina. But uh, with, their mat with their lineup right now, I feel TA is much stronger. With the Dire Slide, so you have the Roshan as TA. You have the Venge, so TA feels like a hero that fits their lineup. Yeah, I would agree. Gives you some good Rosh control as well, get that scouting tool in the pit. Makes Rosh very easy. That would be a pretty synergist synergistic draft, honestly, with that big Death Ward there. Yeah, my, minus the uh, armor plus death ball. The TA, okay. Good call, Winter. So, and IP needs a team, team fight off lane hero, I guess, for Jonas Affirm. What's there still left in the pool? Hmm. Hyde? Hyde is an option. His Centaur, Clockwork, Bat have all been taken out. What do they usually play? Let me see. Oh. That's usually one of those four. <laughs> Options somewhat limited here. Remaining. Beastmaster. Yeah, the Beastmaster. That comes to mind. Five seconds um, remaining. Kind of kind of feel there's not much options. They could do an offlane Earthshaker. We've seen a few teams experiment with that recently. There's no Earthshaker. Let's ban. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whoops. Sand King. Sand King. Ah. You like that from Empire? The Empire style, yeah. I don't know. A Nyx Assassin also could be an option again. Like I said last game, it yes. wasn't just about countering the Dusa. He did a lot of work that game. It's good versus Ember. I don't know if they would actually do Morphling off lane because there's Lina. A lot of synergy. Well, I don't know about that winner. <laughs> You're not a believer. <laughs> no, I don't think NIP are believers. <laughs> Spirit Breaker, maybe. Huh? Whoa. Jakiro. Oh, it's a call okay. Jakiro. That's a little different. So, wait, what's off lane Jakiro? Are they going to do like maybe a dual lane? I Jaki think they have Jakiro to. plus Ogre, Ogre and Disruptor throw safe lane. Yeah. Okay, Jakiro, Ogre, I'd like the synergy there. Set it up with the Fire Blast, maybe connect with a Ice Path after that. There's some kill potential. All right, game number two in this best of three, se three series, NIP versus Rave. NIP up 1-0, one, one win away from moving on to the semifinals in the upper bracket. Conversely, Rave, one loss away from moving into the best of one elimination match in the opening round of the lower bracket. A lot on the line here, Winter. And we'll yes, see indeed. what these teams can do. What are you thinking about these drafts? Does anybody have an obvious edge? I personally like Rave's draft more, but NIP with a more unconventional draft. They have a lot of early aggression and power pushing abilities, the attack speed and the, obviously the Jakiro as well. So I think NIP has much stronger early game. How are NIP going to set up these lanes? We can yeah, go ahead and introduce. I go try lane with the troll. It looks like it. Yeah, Limp will take the Lena probably mid. I think yeah. Jonas will go solo safe lane, and that'll put Hanskin on the disruptor, yeah. Era on the troll, and Seal Kit on the ogre in the aggro it's try. It's Jakiro solo mid. Oh, it's a solo mid Jakiro. Let's look at his items. Oh yeah! Wow. Uh oh, is there going to be a first blood here? Chrissy, he could be in some trouble. There's your Ignite to start it off, but they can't follow up for the kill. Disruptor hasn't leveled anything yet. Won't go for uh, the glimpse. Jakiro against TA mid. TA is going to have a hard time. Oh, it's a wow. difficult lane. Nice Double hey. bounty runes. <laughs> Uh-oh. The lane Raves phase in is going to be very hard for Ray. X will be against Lina. I haven't seen this matchup, but I think Lina 
more or less has the edge in this, in this matchup. Yeah, she's got that super long range. She should be able at least to find a decent amount of farm. It'll be a little bit tougher axed. Very interesting. NIP doing these lanes a lot different, but Solo Midget Hero against TA, as you pointed out, makes a lot of sense. He'll go dual breath at level one, but say goodbye to your refraction. Oh, so what do you think about these tri lanes, Winter? I, I think Ember might have a hard time in this lane troll with his range form. It's gonna bully the melee range Ember Spirit. And they have Ogre, arguably one of the best supports at level one because of his armor and strength. Very tanky. Very yeah, good in boy. this sort of 3 3 situations. And T is gonna have a hard time middle. So technically, Wraith is gonna have a disadvantage in both, in all of their lanes, I say. But looking at the bottom, it looks pretty even so far. Limp, already level 2. It's an even slugfest. Oh, misses the Berserker's call. That could have been a close call. Mid, how's the CS war going? Still fairly even. Yeah, but Will TA be able to take over this lane once we get close to like 6? level sub, I think it's going to be very, very hard for the TA. Early levels is still, is still okay for TA. But once he has uh, very high levels in Liquid Fire, it's going to be hard. Look at Jayo. Oh my god. Whoa! That was close. He was like 6-7 mana shot of the dual bear. Bringing the pain to Jayo. It's 2 minute run. Both of the supports of NIP rotating towards the top side. TA is going to move towards the bottom. It's going to be happy to see a regen. Oh, it's going to invis. <laughs> And they'll get the bounty up top. It'll go to the Ogre. That puts him very close to his level 2. And Disruptor's actually found his already. Still hasn't leveled anything up. We'll save it until they find the proper engagement here. Lots of Sentry Wards coming down for Rave to try and get some control in their jungle here. They will rendezvous and see if they can make something happen. Oh, they want to kill the Jakiro. Yeah. Yeah, the creep wave is, is at a good posi position. It's up on the TAS high ground. Well, they made a move towards mid, but they double back and I'm try something sure a little different. I'm not sure if they can get any kills here. It's this tough. Well, here we go. Radiant Vision. These supports have been off the map for a while. NIP should be a little suspicious here. Siri Chain's on two. Stun on the era. This could be your first blood coming out. Whirling Axes fly through. It's Chrissy that gets it on the Ember Spirit. The smoke works out, and they secure the first kill of the match. Yeah, he was too far up in the lane, the troll, and very good initiation from the Ember to start off the gang there. It was a very important kill since they were having a hard time in the lanes. And looking at the CS, Ember needed that. He's definitely behind on the last hit chart. That'll give him some much needed momentum. Back towards the mid, TA. Still kind of in Strug City here. Look at the CS. It's 10 on the TA, 12 on the Jakiro. Lina has 16, X has like 12. So it's still going okay for Ray. They're not too far behind. Yeah. Well, the leading CS is on the side of NIP. Very minor lead for themselves in the initial part of this laning phase. But the good news for Nip is that Axe, not looking like he'll have a fast blink this game. He's farming okay, but nothing spectacular. Bottom lane. J.O. <laughs> wants this rune. Limp. Hits him with the stun, but he does still bottle up the illusion. Slightly missed time there. And Ninja Boogie is going to be moving... What's bottom, I'd say? But there's going to be a ward here, so... NIP know the bench is here. Yep. Good vision there. Um... Maybe just rotating down to turn this into a 2-1-2. Two, two. Not the most sneaky of rotations. I don't know if it's really for a gank, but maybe just to make some space for the axe and bully this Lena a little bit, who is still the last hit leader. It's not gonna be an easy kill. He's staying so, so far back towards the, the tower. Do they have TPs on a support? Uh, Olga has a TP. And Disruptor doesn't, doesn't have a TP. Yeah, Disruptor. He's level 3 now and does finally skill up some abilities. 1-1-1. One, one, one. And yeah, Ogre grabs the second point in Ignite. Better to get Ignite level 3. It does more damage than the Fire Blast. And you only need the Fire Blast for the stun duration, not the damage. Yep. And of course, it doesn't scale. So Axe is going to 
go behind the tower right now with the bench supporting him around here. He's gonna force maybe a rotation from the Ogre fairly soon. Okay, Ogre's tipping here. And there's, oh, there's gonna be one more from the Disruptor. Uh oh, two TPs. Ryo, he could be in some trouble. Glimpse and the Thunderstrike is there, but it's Hanskin that's in trouble. Oh. Venge gets the kill, and Ryo, well, he's gonna get left behind. Wants the dunk, wow, but not in the threshold. Close. One for close. one. That was close. One more right click. All right, so they trade the support for the axe. Not a bad trade. Yeah, and now I the think. Ember is going to be able to farm the lane. Even though they oh. lost the axe at bottom, but they relieve a lot of pressure for the Ember. Ninja Boogie, he'll just hang out in the bottom lane, try to leech some XP while he Don't waits for his axe to get back to the lane. How's mid going here? Jakiro and TA still very even with each other. Looking at net worth, they're about on point, and within two or three CS of each other. Uh oh, Seal get down bottom, stunned up by Ninja Boogie Ryo. He wants to get the Berserker's call. He'll close the gap, and the big boy Ogre about to get slam dunked. Three to one as Rave get another one up on the scoreboard. Oh, TP from the troll towards the safe thing now. They decided it's enough. We need to farm the troll ASAP. Yeah, Ares starting Pardane. to fall behind a little bit here. They will put some pressure under Ryo. Can they get this glimpse? Oh, back into the top lane, Jonas, yeah, he's in some trouble. He's not going to survive that one. Back down bottom, Ryo, I think he's going to go down here as well. Hanskin setting this up, needs to be careful. The spins are coming out, can he find the dunk? Do they have the damage? Era hits the Whirling Axes and he's there. It's a one for one across the map. Jakiro and Axe, both stuck in the grave. And the bench is so far starting to stack Ancients for the Axe, so he can actually do it later on into the game to close himself into the bling. So far, Rave has a quite good farm on the TA, considered the matchup. He has a lot of denies. That's actually really bad for the Jakiro. As you can see, he's just about to pop level 7 right now. And the TA is 7 and a half level. Yeah. Jakiro, though, now has the maxed out Liquid Fire. Finds his level 7, so pushing can commence for MI NIP. I think they'll stay a little bit quiet until this Lena starts to come online a little bit. They need to wait for that Yules before they can really get too aggressive. Meanwhile, back in the top lane, though, Jonas in trouble. Gets initiated on by Chrissy. Searing chains have connected, and can the Jakiro live? TP's in. Seal gets there with a stun. Lena follows up. Is there a Laguna? Not enough mana. Oh, Chrissy may make it out here. Bottom lane. Roll. Glimpse back onto Ryo. Oh, he got bashed by Era as well. Radiance middle tower is under attack. So no one actually died there <laughs> at top and bottom. Oh. I'm just gonna pick up a bounty rune here and T is dealing a lot of damage towards the tier 1 and middle. And uh, Tia, is she actually gonna get it? A lot of damage. There are gonna be some rotations coming. Lena gonna have to walk her way back towards the mid. That would have been a kill up top if she had the mana for that Laguna. At this point, X is halfway to his bling. So they'll be waiting for that before they start smoke ganking with the supports. Roshan can be done very easily, even without the medallion from the bench. They can actually do it once they have secured map control on the other side. Maybe a couple of wards here and sentries. Yeah. The Venge and the, or the uh, Scream as well as the Meld Strike yeah, make it very Ember's easy. Ember's reaching the state where he's just ready to fight. After he gets his drums, he's more or less ready. And with a couple of more levels on his spell. Maybe at level 8 and 9, Ember's going to be very powerful during that stage of the game. Yeah. Ember was off to a slow start and his CS is still pretty low, but those two kills he's picked up, one of them being the First Blood, has really helped his bottom line. And now he's actually recovered quite nicely. Era, trying to recover in the bottom lane, Helm of Iron will up. Looks like HOD will be on the horizon for him. This is going to be the blink from the axe already. He just cleared a stack in the jungle. It's 200 shot from the blink. This is the most important timing they need right now. All right. Very oh, quiet lane. early game so far. But up top, oh, oh, oh Jonas. He's going to be in some trouble. Macro Pyre comes out. Searing oh. Chains connect. But he's just too tanky. Glimpse oh, back onto Chrissy. Oh no, he doesn't have another remnant. He's in trouble. He dies. That was a really good glimpse from the disruptor. He was yeah. there as soon as the Jakiro was in trouble. Tip teleported in and got the glimpse off uh, middle lane. Oh, Jayo. 
J.O. he's in deep. Era TP's in. Hits him with the ranged axes. There's your meld. But they've got an LSA. No detection. Jay will be fine. Top lane, top lane. Axe is coming. Teal Kid on the run, but it looks like they may turn for the Jakiro. He's got the battle hunger on. Nowhere for the Jakiro to go. Gets stunned up in the tree line. It's another dunk. And he'll fall. Now Seal Kid on the run. Searing Chains come out. It's going to be a two for double kill for the Axe. Oh, that, was, that was a really key moment for them, killing the Jakiro off. That hero really needs a very good start into the game to be able to take down towers. Now a lot of Nip's tempo has been slowed down due to Jakiro dying a couple of times already. Yeah. Oh, stun. Uh oh, back up top. Laguna Blade comes out onto Chrissy. Does he have a remnant down? Doesn't look like it. He'll fall before he can get one out. They get a counter kill once more. Looking at this gold graph, it is Rave with a pretty decent lead, about 2k net worth and experience. Right, MP, NIP rather. Amber still putting up a fight. Amber having a hard time, but thanks to the Axe, they are still in this game. He's making sure that his team is still getting crucial pickoffs left and right. Got his blink dagger up now, ready to maybe get a bit aggressive. Here? Are we going to see a smoke? Ninja Boogie's the one with it. They will clear out the creep wave, but NIP getting in position to take a fight themselves. Hero level 8 has the macro pyre, and Laguna up in about 20 seconds. Lena closing in on that Yule Scepter. Yeah, there's going to be multiple Yule Scepters from the NIP team. I guess it will be at least two Yule Scepters on the Lena and the Jack Hero. EA completed the Yasha. So he's more than ready to fight right now. Probably looking to get the Aegis as soon as possible. Looking at Radiant Vision, they don't have too many wards down and none in that area. So it is something that Rave could probably try and sneak, take a risk, and look to secure an Aegis. Yeah, NIP is going to make a rotation right now with the smoke. They saw the supports in the jungle, so oh, here oh, we Rave go. have the same idea. They're going to bump right into each other. Ryo comes in. Berserker's calls there, but a macro pyre in the middle of the fight. It's NIP that seem to have the edge for now. Limp on the side. He brings down the axe first. Ninja Boogie goes to the high ground. And Eric goes the other way. Glimpse back. Ninja Boogie, get over here, he says. It's a two for nil to get things started. Oh. They've got a sentry ward. J.O. thinks he's safe, but down he goes. NIP again. A three for nil as they regain some momentum. Oh, is it going to be a 4 for nail cast? He tries to TP home, it won't happen! My oh my, Winter. That was just such a good fight from NIP with that macro pyre, dealing so much damage in this congested area. Perfect spot there in that little corridor. Limp, huge AoE damage that way. The Flux. <laughs> the Flux. <laughs> you know, this is like uh, the hot spot, the hot gates in 300. Down bottom, the big boy Ogre, he's going to be in some trouble. Chrissy comes in, searing chains, but this is aggressive. Ryo comes in as well. Handskin, he'll TP in. Seal Kid, he gets slam dunked. Oh, is there more support on the way? Yup, air is there. Whirling axes fly through. Kinetic field, not going to stop Ryo, but he'll get glimpsed back. Can he find a dunk? No. Era caught by searing chains. Now they're going to find a kill on Era, perhaps. They come back in, they've got the dunk. It's a two for nil now for Rave as they strike back once again. TA, meanwhile, up top, split pushing that top lane. What a tops and turvy match it is so far, Winter. Oh, Glimpse is ready. Uh-oh, Ember, LSA. Whoa. But the Glimpse back, it's not over yet. Handskin, he'll actually die to creeps. Oh, no, oh, no, NIP, they're falling apart here, Winter. Oh. It's Rave coming out on top. Oh, that was way too greedy, trying to kill the Ember. They got punished so heavily because of that. And JL Mima. What's his next item? Let's see. Did he purchase anything? Just uh, Yasha so far. But Roche is already open right now with two heroes from NIP down. I feel like the TA should have more gold than that. Yeah, he had that I Yasha a while ago. He actually should have something Dyer's else. I guess not. There's something on the ground. Let's see. Dyer's top tower oh. is under attack. So apparently that's all he has. Yeah. Okay. His net worth is pretty high though. Still in the top three. Dyer's top tower. Top oh, tier one tower goes down. Ninja Boogie, he gets sent back to where he came. <laughs> Retreat. <laughs> tower gets denied though. Nicely played. Okay, so they are pinging Rosh now. Oh, the ward here. 
spots out era. Yeah, pretty aggressive wards coming out from Rave. You got one in the middle of the jungle and one at this medium camp here, giving them a lot of intel on the NIP movements. Oh, Top lane, man. Jonas, does he make it out here? No! Close call. Meanwhile in the Radiant Jungle, Chrissy, he gets locked down. It's kills all over the map. Now Ninja Boogie, the Ding Ding in the Laguna. They want this Venge and they'll find it. Oh, T.A. Now in the mid lane, Glimpse right back into the Static Storm Kinetic Field. She'll try to TP up, but the LSA is there. It's a dead Templar Assassin. 11 to 11 is NIP squared up. Oh, that was a huge blow. If they actually got that pick off, they, they could have just proceeded to Roshan. But NIP turned that situation around. With all their wars, they see the positioning of the Rave heroes and were able to take advantage of it. I mean, just look at this gold graph, Winter. That'll give you a pretty good inkling of how this game's been going completely back and forth. Once one team gets an edge, the other strikes right back with a good fight. And we're just about zeroed out here as we pass the 16th minute. Ember, he's picked up his drum of endurance, so Chrissy, feeling a bit more eager to fight, finds his level 11. Still has a good bit of farm to go before he gets that Battle Fury, though. Axe, how's he doing? He has the Blade Mail, looks like BKB on the horizon for him. And Troll has a Centaur in the Roshan pit. Just in case Rave wants to go for Roshan, he will actually have that intel. And Troll, he's got wow. the Yasha coming out. Oh, that was close. Oh, I've got that kill. Oh, it's an invisible Lena. Courier? Oh. No. Are you sure? Not brave enough. <laughs> Not brave enough, you say. <laughs> <laughs> Not right, your play it safe. He'll TP home. So, uh, Ambus is still not doing too well with his net worth, around 6,000 at this point. He, sti he still needs a lot more items against this sort of heroes. Probably even needs to get a big baby against their heroes. Not, ve not very sure what what's his next item progression. Better for it mean that the Ember is very easy target in the fights against a Disruptor. You probably want to get a BKB against that hero. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. BKB is the best way to deal with it, but we saw in the last game, right? You just didn't prioritize BKBs very much. Here we go, uh, smoke rotation. They're gonna come from behind here. Oh, they double back. They see the Jakiro. They may just go for the dragon. Magic missile. No follow-up, though. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, oh, TA diving past the tier one tower. Hans gets here, traps him in a static storm. Kinetic field. No, he makes it out of the kinetic field. Put the glimpse back over, right into the hands of NIP. They set it up. Macro pyres. He comes back down. Ice path. Jo in trouble. Jo down. Well, that was such a big move there by the Disruptor, knowing that he has to be at the tower defense just to make sure he catches someone out first. That was a very good rotation by me, making sure that the Disruptor was the first one to TP down so that he can actually catch out the TA, making sure he can't escape there. Yep. Did they actually get the deny on the tower? They did not. He oh. was killed by the Dire. Uh-oh, mid lane, Lena, oh. isolated by Ryo. It's a freebie for the Axe. Nice pick off there for Rave. It levels it out once more. 12 to 12. Axe still holding pretty at number one on the net worth. Roshan is still there for them. Mm, Lina's down, but yeah, probably not. Still not a very good time for the TA to go for Rosh. TP down bottom. We'll defend that tier one tower. I feel like the fact that NIP have kept the tempo up and kind of prevented Ray from having that free opportunity in the Roche Pit is a, a victory for them, at least to some degree. Yeah, that's, that Centaur was just important for them to have, giving, giving them vision in there. And top lane, Chrissy just bought a Perseverance, so it's going to go for the Battle Fury first. Oh, Disruptor. Uh oh, he's going to bump right into hand skin. Searing Chains Balance. connects. There's your Static Storm, Kinetic Field. Chrissy makes it outside, but Seal Kid TP's in, and that'll scare him off. Wow, that was such a good move. Space created. Four heroes there and Disruptor dropped his ultimate yeah. as well in the process. And now Blink Dagger comes out on the TA. Is Rave going to go for the Roche right now? Disruptor has no ultimate and they TP three heroes at all. 
Look at this. There's an Alpha Wolf in the pit. That's a Radiant Alpha Wolf. Ninja Boogie says, wait a second. What's that dog doing in here? Uh-oh, the jig is up. Can they do it fast enough, though? MIP on their way over. This is risky, Winter. Oh, it's going to be close, though. I don't think they can finish it on time. Chrissy invisible. This is dangerous. This is dangerous. Talking out NIP. They do not have the damage to bring down Roche, but NIP could be in a little bit of trouble here. The Jakiro's not with him. In comes Ryo. Connects on two. Hands get in trouble. That's a slam dunk. Lita goes down as well. Fast three for nil as Rave take the fight they needed. Swap on to Jakiro. Uh oh. Nice oh, no, Does he's he make it out survive. here? Nope. The dunk secures the last kill. That axe initiation here, catching two heroes in the middle of the fight was so crucial. With the blade mail on, he dealt so much damage. And even though the Witch Doctor ulti was just like for two seconds, but it dealt enough damage for them to get the culling blade off. Alright, so Roche goes down to the dire side, and that's an Aegis of the Immortal in the inventory of the TA. Things shaping up for Rave a little bit here, looking at the grab. Well, we're right back to where they were about 10 minutes ago. 2,000 net worth lead as they... Well, take the edge for now, but if history's going to repeat itself here, I reckon we could see another fight that could turn things around once more. Uh, but the thing is, like, Rave's lineup is going to be stronger as Tarsus right now. So the 2,000 goal lead they have right now at this point is much stronger than the 2,000 goal they had. Like, Very good point. 10 minutes ago. Axe now has a BKB, 10 seconds of magic immunity, ready to rock and roll in this next fight. How's the item progression for Nip going? Looks like Era going to be forced into a BKB next item. Lena still just sitting on the Yules. Limp is really slowed in his item progression. He's, he's still really far from the build you were talking about. The Daedalus, the, the yes. bling, the BKB, <laughs> the Acceptor, whatever you want as a call, Lena. Yeah, NIP were putting up a really good fight, but now that they handed over the Roche, things are going to get a lot more difficult. Yeah, this, yeah. this Jakiro is getting weaker and weaker as time goes by. He, they only took three, uh, three tier 1 towers, and that's about it. As a Jakiro, having a Jakiro on your team means that uh, you need to take more than that and within 25 minutes. Otherwise, the Jakiro seems like a pick that it's not worth it at all. I understand they wanted to actually shut down the TA, but the TA honestly had a fairly good early game in the laning phase. Yeah. Jakiro fared pretty well, but didn't find a solo kill and didn't really stop the TA from farming all that much. But now Jonas, he's got a Yul's Scepter up, so at least he has a... Uh, Core item to his name, Era closing in on the BKB. The, the Battle Fury is up on the Ember. On the Courier, yep, there it is. That's a big pickup. Oh, look at this disruptor. So big with the Bloodlust. <laughs> He's huge. Well, now that the Battle Fury is up on Ember, Chrissy can start to kind yeah, of turbo farm a little bit. They should be looking to take a fight as soon as they can with the Aegis. I don't think NIP will, wanna, will want to take a fight anytime soon against the Aegis. It's far too risky. And how much time is left on that Aegis? Quite a bit. Uh, about e half duration so far. BKB is almost up on the troll as well. Yeah, that'll be a big item. And now, the Chikiro, he gets a blink. Okay, a little mobility there. Gives him some initiation power. They might actually find someone here to troll. Oh no! Right into Era. He gets stunned right away. This is going to be an easy kill. Oh my god. He, he was so close to the BKB. That was a key kill there for Rave on the troll. Radiant structures are yep. Now they're going to get a tier 1 tower out of it as well. The glyph comes out, but NIP not even going to pretend to pose a defense here. This should be two towers, I think. I don't, I don't feel NIP are strong enough to even defend the tier 2. I'm not sure if they want to go for it, but they are definitely very strong right now. This axe is on a godlike streak. It seems like so far this series has been all about who's got the red man, because he has been controlling these games. That was his 10 second BKB, uh, BKB can charge, but well worth it to kill the troll. Down bottom. Ember starting to rotate. Oh no, they are going to get sandwich here. There's a ward here for Rave. Uh oh, in the jungle, there's two fights breaking out at once. And Chrissy, he's actually in a lot of trouble here. He's silenced. The macro pyre doing a lot of damage. Kinetic field glimpse. Disruptor will just TP home. Meanwhile, at the tier 2 tower, Sealkin, he'll live. And it will just be a pick on the Ember. Everyone else on NIP makes it out alive. 
Uh, that was a really good combination of the Static Storm plus the Macropire. Without BKB, there's no chance he survived in that. The power of the Static Storm? Yeah, at least the Amber actually purchased the Battle Fury already. So he didn't lose too much gold there. Yep. They just need something to deal with this axe though. He just got his bling though, so keep look at great skill. Who can he actually kill? Probably just the two supports. The Witch Doctor has 1000 HP with the point booster. He needs level 16 for that, for that to be an easy kill. Yeah, even this Venge is pretty tanky. Just She's got about Venge. 1100 Venge. HP. Venge is a support that has a very good strength growth. Her level is 2.6, so she's very tanky with a lot of HP and armor. Top lane. Top oh, lane. Jack here, see you, son. <laughs> Defensive Yules, but that's going to be a slam dunk. Ryo continuing his godlike streak here. He is a monster. 13 3 and 1. Desolator on the TA right now. All right, J.O. really starting to come online. He's been pretty quiet this game. 0-3-3, three, and three, yeah, but finally getting that item His team has get. been making a lot of space for him, yeah. especially the Axe. And here we go, Lim has another Invis room. Shall he find someone this time? Be careful though, the Dyer oh, have sentries Kass. down. Kass has no TP. He looks to be dead. The dead. team nearby, they see Cast. Oh, looks God. like the Witch Doctor gonna get sandwiched here. Yep, he's going down. They won't find Ninja Boogie though. Or at least not yet. Stay in the trees, bro. <laughs> Stay in the trees! This is awkward. He's got a TP scroll, at least. Do they have a gem yet? For the trap? There's so many TA traps around. You might want to invest on a gem for that. Yeah. No gem yet, so far. They've got dust and sentries. Oh, uh, axe. Bro. Seal Kid, he'll get taunted in the jungle here. Ninja Boogie hits him with a stun. Another easy kill for the Red Man. X is just dominating every game they pick in this series. Yep. Doesn't seem to matter which team it's on. He's just this dominating force that once he gets this kind of momentum, he's so hard to deal with. He's going to have an Aghanim Scepter coming out in about 500 gold. This he's is going to clear gonna up his agents as well. really hard for NIP. Rave has the battle late game as well. So, throw alone, you can't really do so much against double double DPS cores, I feel, unless he's super farm. And if you look at the net worth round, he's around 12,000. Like, the other three cores of Rave are just around the same net worth as him. This is a hard task. All right, both sides grouped up and moving into the enemy sector to the map. Rave invading the Radiant Jungle. Maybe putting some pressure on this tier two tower down bottom lane. J.O. now with that Desolator, it opens up some pushing options for his team. Jakiro is at top, but he can't kill the Ember alone. He needs backup if they want to go for this kill. You know, he's going back to base. TA probably working on a BKB with that Ogre Club. Any other big items for NIP coming out quite yet? Doesn't, oh, Ghost Scepter on the Jakiro, that's something. But not much. Their item progression is really slowing down. No Limp's got a point booster. The next big item is the Axe Scepter on the Lina, I think. Yeah. Nothing, nothing else they could purchase to change the face of the game right now. They are just very far behind. Here we oh, go, NIP. They have to win this up. fight. The big timing window here. Oh, the Axe! Oh, he breaks the smoke! Oh my they know God. somebody's nearby, but they can't find him. Meanwhile, in the mid, they find Ninja Boogie. They set it up with the Yules. They get a pick, but not what they were hoping for. Definitely not. It's just a support pick off, and you smoke by heroes. I don't know if, if it was actually worth it at the end of the day. It's too much time being invested, and the Venge is like, it's all right for me to die for my team, as long as none of the cores die to the smoke. Yeah. Getting to that stage of the game where smokes are quite the commodity. So the Ember has uh, Crystallis now and Axe completed the Axe at the big items coming from Rafe at this point of the game. J.O. is halfway to his BKB right now. Yeah, actually even a little closer than that, just a thousand gold away. 
Witch Doctor, still pretty far off from his Agonims. But he's he got doesn't really need through. the Axe this game. They have so much damage from the other three calls that the True. support Axe is not important anymore. He just needs to make sure that he keeps the cause alive with the stun. Cast. Oh, hiding in the trees. Okay, he'll TP home. Roche is up. <laughs> Another creep. You can see Nip. They are always constantly sending a neutral creep or a helmet dominated creep into the Roche pit. The, he the hero creep gets pinged out by the dire. They can see it. Ryo comes in and he'll finish it off. <laughs> well, Big dunk. Double damage. Well, turning into a pretty passive mid game here. NIP staying turtled up on their side of the base and can't, can't really blame NIP for that though. They are in yep. no position to fight. They and like you might pointed out before, Rave have that late game advantage, so they're really in no hurry here. Any time oh. that they can sit back and farm up their cores, they're they're happy as a clam. Almost down bottom. Double damage on that axe. And now they move into the Roche pit, and this time they'll be able to do it quick. All that minus armor looks like NIP won't even be able to react if they knew they were in here. It's basically a BKB for J.O. Yes, Aegis and BKB. This is just go time to uh, try and breach high ground right now for Rafe. Right on top, Blake's forward goes in on the arrow, they'll glimpse him back. Aaron not winning that battle. Oh, it's a BKB oh. battle. He gets a bash. Who's going to win? Oh, it's the Axe. He slam dunks him with that Aghanim Scepter. A big threshold. Now Handskin. He could be in trouble. Oh. Ding, ding, ding. It's the Ogre that comes in with the stuns. They still lose the Disruptor, but it's the Ogre that ends that huge streak and gets a lot of gold out of it. How much you got? How much did you get? Oh, 1.2k for the fight. Pretty good. What happened to the Lena? Just got picked up in the middle by Amber. One for three around the map. That opens up space for Ray to move into this tier two tower mm. mid, and no defense to be found. This is getting really hard for me right now. Tro, Tro can't really handle the multiple DPS heroes on Rave right now. The other heroes just mainly dish out spell damage, and Rave has BKB on the TA and the Axe. And the troll can't do enough against those heroes right now. And now even there's a crit up on Chrissy's Ember Spirit, so he's really coming online. Now another 2,500 gold in the inventory as well. This is getting really scary. These dire cores are getting bigger and bigger by the minute. About a 10k gold, 14,000 experience lead for the dire. What do you do if you're NIP at this point? Falling further and further behind, how do you start to regain momentum? Uh, I think high ground defense is the best way to start it. Even though I say that Rave has the better late game and you don't want to drag the game if you are NIP, but they do not have much options right now. Yeah, they got to fight around towers and objectives, that's for sure. Hopefully they try to farm the core Lina, as you mentioned, to carry Lina to a certain extent before they try to make a comeback with that. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Oh, NIP will group up in the top. They'll start to pressure this tier 2 tower. Ryo on his way in, but they'll just bring it down. Okay, they glyph it. The liquid fire, not going to be enough to finish it off, and it'll be an easy deny. Uh, here you go, bottom lane. Chrissy. Maybe in trouble here. Lina sets it up. They've got the static storm. Nowhere for the Ember to go. Even a Laguna, they bring him down. But the tower does not get denied. The hero, Cart, gets the last hit. That was, that was still... Okay for Rafe, I'd say. They still got a tower, but still not very good giving away your cost. But at the end of the day, the game is still fine for them. They still have a sub sufficient lead to actually close out the game right now. Got about two minutes left on this Age of the Immortal on the TA. They may try to make the best of it. And it looks like this tier 2 tower up top is going to be their choice. The last outer tower for NIP. And it looks like it'll fall uncontested. Oh, troll. Oh, no. Does he win this battle against the Axe? BKB battles. Whirling Axes got the ranged kind come out, but there's a death ward. That'll go through your BKB. 
on the high ground. Jakiro isolates Ninja, uh, Ninja Boogie. He might be able to find a kill here. Nope, Jakiro's in a little bit of trouble. Ryo coming in, the coconut bouncing around to the creep. Oh no! The hero creep turning into a saboteur. Now J.O. on the other side. He's got the BKB swap across. Who's gonna win this duel? Another triple cast on the Ninja Boogie. It's J.O. coming out big. NIP in a lot of trouble. It's a full five-man wipe as J.O. gets an ultra kill. Andrew. What a chaotic fight, but it's a five for nil. Andrew, we are going to a game tree, bro. <laughs> yeah, this is feeling close to over. NIP really running out of options here. And there's no way they can deal with the physical damage coming out from Rafe right now. They're just too far behind and their lineup doesn't allow them to deal with Rafe heroes right now at this point of the game. Yeah. The deficit getting pretty big. Top lane of Barracks will get cleaned up. There's a couple of buybacks available for NIP, but I don't think they'll use them here. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Chrissy already knocking on the door of this tier 3 tower. It'll go down. There's no glyph for another two and a half minutes. This is disastrous. They're going to press forward. Searing Chains out on the hand skin. Ryu comes in. That's a dunk on the Disruptor. Send him right back from whence he came. Oh, they're they're going to play really safe right now. Back off, regen, and just go again after. So what are the odds here, Winter? What are the chances NIP turns this one around? Probably 9 to 1 at this point already. Unless <laughs> Brave makes a huge mistake and everyone run, runs into the Macro Pyre and the Disruptor Ultimate, I don't see how Brave is gonna lose a team fight. Yeah. Lina just didn't have enough momentum. Limp's still so far away from that yeah, Agony like, Scepter. With this hero, you need to do well at the early stages and keep killing and getting your items. Otherwise, the hero falls off very quickly in the yep. late game. Even though you can argue you can get Refresher, get X, and you have the piercing a, a BKB ability of your ultimate, but he's just nowhere near that moment. He just got his X, and okay. I'm not sure how much it's going to mean to the team fight. Yeah, at this point, they've already lost so much of their base. Two full lanes of barracks down. A little more gold than I thought, though. Getting the Aghanims now. Yeah, yeah I mean, something. Brave could play it super safe and just wait for Roshan if they want to. And there's no risk of them losing the fight if they get Aegis and Cheese this time. Still going to be a while before Roche comes up, but now two Daedalus out for Rave. One on the Ember, one on the TA, and she is just massive now. The slow start that J.O. had is turned around. All that space creation has really paid off. So they are not going to wait for the Roche. Anyway, they are already strong enough to just finish the game. BKB on the Ember, so three BKBs. Yeah, I think that's a smart choice. All the spells from NIP are just useless already now. Yeah, two other big items picked up also as they smoke in the Radiant Jungle. There's a Shiva's now on the Axe. They'll even pop the drums as they cruise on through. Cast also has that Aghanim Scepter on the Witch Doctor. Wow. NIP smoked up. They're going to bump right into each other. Joan is going to be the first one to go down. Ryo comes in. Limp falls shortly after. It's a bloody disaster for NIP. A buyback from the Jakiro. Now for the troll, but doesn't even matter. Winter Hanskin gets stove into the base. They're getting completely cleaned up. It's been at least five heroes dead. It could soon be seven. Rave with all five alive, still at max HP. It's soon to be a dieback for the Jakiro era, the lone defender. Ice path on five, but it makes no difference. NIP tap out. We're going to an ace match off the back of a rampage. X means 100% win rate this series. Yep. Bold prediction here, Winter. I think we may see an Axe ban next game. I think so. <laughs> that hero. The chops are real. Yep. Michael Jordan, the slam dunks. 19, 4, and 6. That's the hero to beat. Well played by Rave, though. NIP, they had a very momentum based lineup, and, well, that even skirmishing in the early to mid game really benefited Rave. Yeah, definitely. And the uh, axe just. One after one early fight, got his blink and everything just went downhill for them, for NIP after that. They had a sort of a okay start in the lanes, but I thought they would actually have more advantage. But they didn't win their lanes hard enough, so their lineup just 